I just wanted to show you a bit of this clip and then I'll elaborate from there because I'm about to retire again, but Spirit said, put this out here and just do it now before you get too sleepy. So I want to share my screen and share this clip with you. Sister, Sister Rashida is smiling. We want to remember, we want to remember the ancestors. But today, the ancestors, they have a name. The name is Kanikuria. We want to call your name because names do not die. Names do not rust. Names do not rot. Gani Kanikuria. This is me, Kibule Kamara, son of Ketosana, son of Tadi Linsini. Son of Bamba Yenka, your daughter. Today we are here to remember you and all of the ancestors. So this water that I'm pouring today with my sister Rashida Ismaili, what do we want it for? We want it for you to guide us today to be able to tell your story. This story. I gotta listen to this story because I, I, this is the part that really struck me. We are told Kanikuria went to the, the stream at the edge of Damania. The morning dew started clearing up. People did not see Kanikuria return. We tell the story of this woman, young woman. She was about 16 or 17 and uh, she went every day with the other girls to um, to a specific uh, river to get fresh water and also um, they, they would uh, bathe and wash clothes, etc. And this particular day, she got up early as she normally would do, went to fetch water and never came back and no one ever saw her. And, and so it was, it, um, people said that uh, she was taken in the, in the slave trade. When you leave that, that, when you take all of these people behind, we always talk about that, that there was devastation in Africa. That was David, but how did that manifest in people's actual lives? What are the stories that told that talk about what happens when somebody like Kami Kuria gets stolen? That story of those communities, the actual effect of the slave trade on those communities and the destruction of civilization, of people's lives, etc., that is was not that well documented. That's the, the African side of it. The African, well, both, they're both African side, but the, the, the side that's left behind, the, the side of the continent itself, on the land of the continent. It's hard to find the documentation as to the impact that the slave trade had directly on individual communities and peoples and stuff like that. That was not that documented. No.
that really that really touched me watching that video you know I was tired I was getting ready to go to bed and retire for the night and the spirit led me to go into my book bookmarks on an old computer it was late right I was up later than I usually stay up and so I looked in there and maybe like the fifth bookmark it was this brother speaking and I was like okay I know he's a storyteller what is he talking about what is he going to talk about but something else had happened to me the day before so I was led to something else so I know I'm supposed to be sharing this story so when I listened and I heard that part I stopped and then I retired and I went, I went to bed and then I said, okay, I'll share it tomorrow. But what really struck me about that story was we always talk about the impact of the slave trade on African-Americans. So when I listened and I heard that part, I stopped and then I retired and I went, I went to bed and then I said, okay, I'll share it tomorrow. But what really struck me about that story was we always talk about the impact of the slave trade on African Americans or those um, throughout the diaspora. We really do. We talk about that. But just maybe about a month ago, the spirit said to me, you know what? It also impacted your brothers and sisters back home. Because how did they feel when, when we were taken? We didn't have any reference point as to where we were taken to. So when we were taken from Africa, we had nowhere to look. Our people had nowhere to look. There was no one that was going to say to us, you know, your mother is looking for you, your father, your uncle, your granny is looking for you. Nobody cared about the devastation and how we felt on both sides of the water. But, but it was just recently that it dawned on me that, oh my God, that must have hurt us, uh, my people back home as well. We just don't hear the stories about it, right? We don't hear the stories. We have to tell our own stories. When I read the story of Kojo Lewis in Barracoon by Zora Neale Hurston, and he talked about how happy he was when Zora Neale Hurston appeared. So he, he was so happy that someone came finally came to hear his story of how he was stolen, kidnapped from Africa when slavery was, after slavery was outlawed. Tradition to not die. We still need oral tradition. Where are the storytellers? I actually was sitting in the car like two days ago, like the day before I found this clip and I went on my Kindle app and I'm like, wait a minute. I forgot I even downloaded this story, this sample, African storytelling. And it brought my heart so much joy, African storytelling. And the brother who wrote the book, Yaya Sanko, he says, hi, I am Yaya Sanko. I was born and raised in the Gambia, also known as the smiling coast of Africa in a household with a strong artistic tradition. My family belongs to the Jali or Griot community, which is responsible for preserving West African culture, customs, and traditions. The Jali played a critical role in developing the Mande Empire's Kurukun Fuga, a historic set of laws inscribed on the list of intangible human heritage by UNESCO in 2009, 
Growing up in a jolly household, I learned the many roles that griots play in society, including as oral historians, poets, storytellers, praise singers, cultural mediators, orators, and musicians. My mother, a griot, traces her roots back to the 12th century and has passed down her knowledge to me. I also pursued an academic career and completed a master's thesis on the subject at Tempere University. Through my studies, I learned research techniques and worked as an assistant lecturer, honing my skills in oral music instru instruction. So this is the thing that really, that really pierced my heart. He says, during my travels and studies at various universities, I found that the material available in Gambian arts and culture, customs, and African civilizations was often insufficient or represented through a European lens of colonization and slavery. In response, I collaborated with others to create the Sanko Dynasty platform, where I share stories about Gambian culture and traditions and promote cross-cultural understanding. Through storytelling, I hope to break down cultural barriers and increase awareness and appreciation of the rich history and heritage of the Gambia, West Africa, and the African continent as a whole. I think this is so beautiful, so beautiful, because we must tell our stories. We must keep our stories alive. Don't be sad by it. Be inspired by the stories, our stories. Like they said, they never saw their beloved again. She went out to the river to collect water and she never came back. She never came back. So I just wanted to share that piece. I hope you got something out of it, but you must look for your stories and you must tell your stories. You have to bring your art expression, your artistic expression forward because it's who we are. We are artistic people. We are ever creating. Don't get caught up in the computer and you, you don't bring out what is naturally inside of you, your gifts are inside of you, your cultural expression is inside of you, is in your hands, is in your, your voice, is in everything, is in your movement, is in your body. So this is something, before I go off to retire, I just wanted to share this with you. I hope it inspires you. Yes, like I said, I almost forgot to tell you and share this with you, but just wanted to put this out here before I retire for the evening, okay? I hope you have a blessed day. I hope you keep searching, keep growing, go on that journey. There's so much to discover. Peace and love. Thank you.